here at The Experience this Monday, April 10th at 6 p.m. Eastern, our usual time. And I think you already know at this point, it's gonna be good no matter what. We're gonna have the DC, we're gonna have the Marvel, we're gonna have the Dynamite, Rex and John and Robbie, yes. Robbie's on Monday, we're gonna, you know, Nick will do something, you know, he'll just intervene whenever he feels like it. And I'll try to make sure he doesn't do that. So no matter what, it'll be a great time. Remember, it's this Monday, April 10th, 6 p.m., only here on The Experience. Can't wait to see you. What is up, everybody? It feels like I haven't done a live stream in forever. It's probably because I haven't done one in over a week. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Friday's show. That's the Rex and the Robbie show. And you can't have the Rex and the Robbie show without my man Rex. What is up, my man? Hey, my buddy? Man, brush off that Frank Miller uh, uh, fanboy uh, haze you're in. I mean, he did, I'm sorry we're late. I apologize to everyone because the man who, who issued the assignment did not complete the assignment prior to the show start and was scrambling around writing his list. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Don't work like that, sir. Hey, here's the thing. I can come up with my favorite baseball movies at the drop of a hat. I just needed to write them down. But yes, you're right. You know, I'm still in that bask of Megacon. Not just meeting Frank Miller. That was cool. But meeting people like John Spiliotopoulos because I asked him how to pronounce his name correctly. But Spilia was great, meeting people in the community, uh, hanging out with Bueller. It was just such a fantastic time. And yes, now it's time to get back into the swing of things here. So as we mentioned, we're talking about baseball movies tonight. Why? Because last week was the beginning of the baseball season. The Yankees are doing pretty strong. And today also marks the 30th anniversary of The Sandlot which is one of my personal favorite baseball movies. So I figured we'd talk about him because me and Rex both like sports. We both like movies, and we like sports movies. Rex, overall, there's a lot of baseball movies. What do you think about them overall? I, I, I got to tell you, for me, baseball movies are like horror movies to you, right? So as you're telling me before the show started, all these movies you hadn't seen, okay? I was like, what? Are you kidding me? So I – and you asked me a question that – uh is it sports movies in general or, uh, you know, I got to say, it's probably more baseball. There are more of the movies made. Okay. That's for sure. Um, and I don't know. It's just something about them. You know, uh, the sport itself, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a unique game if you think about it. Yeah. And what I love is that there's so many different elements of it. There are movies that focus on the professional aspect of baseball, like what it's like to be a baseball player. There are movies that deal with the fantasy aspect of it. Like what's it like to be a kid thrown into a major league baseball game. There are movies that are about like the Sandlot that are about the obsession and the bonding experience that happens when your kids playing baseball in the Sandlot. Right. So I'll go ahead and kick us off with the Sandlot because it is the 30th anniversary today the exact day uh, april 7th 1993 i remember going to the movie theater and seeing this movie i remember renting this movie all the time because the sandlot even though it's about a group of kids playing baseball over the course of a summer coming of age tale even though it's set in the 60s if you just move that 20 years forward that's my childhood you know what I'm saying? Like, let's chew tobacco. Let's smoke cigars. Let's get on crazy rides. Let's go to the swimming pool. Let's everything. Let's jump the fence. We got to get the ball. Oh, the crazy dog in the neighborhood. All of that stuff was present in my life. And the Sandlot to me completely captures in a most perfect way what baseball actually is to fans, to players, to kids. Sandlot to me is the heart of baseball movies. What do you think about that one? Is that on your list? I, it is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on my list. I, I love the Sandlot. Um, I love all baseball movies. And I think the reason it is, is that you can tell so many different stories because of the uniqueness of, of, of the particular game. Okay. Because when you look at baseball, it is unique from any other re sport, sporting game with the exception of maybe curling. All right. <laughs> All right, there is no other major sport like that. Think about it. Every other sport is played on some sort of rectangular grid, okay? Whether it be basketball or even hockey, okay? Uh, you go back up and down, up and down, right? Football, uh, um, ba basketball, hockey, soccer, anything you right? get soccer, okay? And here's the other uniqueness of, of, of baseball. Every other game is timed, okay? Now, I'm not including, of course, golf or 
or tennis per se, because those they're, they're sports, obviously, you know, but they're individual sports. So it, it's very different, you know, a, a different kind of, of, of context. But, yeah, you know, every everyone has a clock, whether it be soccer, you know, counting up or counting, you know, uh, or basketball counting and football counting down, whatever the case may be. It's always a timed game, whereas theoretically a baseball game could go on to infinity based on the way the rules are built. Baseball is played on a diamond. Okay, baseball is unique in that it it is an individual sport and it's a team sport all at the same time. Yep. Okay, when, you, when you're when you're at bat, it, it's and my daughter, of course. Hold on. Hey, Liv, I'm doing a live stream. Say hello to everyone. We're, we're, we're talking about uh, favorite baseball movies, and I'm giving the explanation I always give to the girls uh, that we coach. So, all right, can, is it are, are you in a deathly emergency? All right. Okay, then I'll call you later. Goodbye. Love you, too. Bye. That was nice to have a surprise appearance from Rex's daughter. <laughs> she knows what time I have to do live streams. And she could, you, you've been on it with me on Monday when it rains, right? And it was like... You know, obviously, my time is not important in any way. Okay, <laughs> but what he's doing is, um, so I, you know, that's my love of the game. Okay, it, it, it's so weird. It's just unique in so many different ways. You know, you're you're playing. You you you're, it's an individual sport when you're 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 in the box and and you're batting. It, yep. It's a team sport when you're playing defense, right? I, I, it it's an individual sport when you're pitching. Okay, it's so weird. It's, you know, it's like almost a, well, actually, pitcher and catcher. It's almost like uh, uh, playing doubles in tennis. You know, so so many aspects. It touches so many different parts, and I think that's why. And and it's a game that you play as children. So that so there's so many. So that's why a, a movie like Sandlot was. It wasn't just about baseball. It was about the youth of America. When you know, for me, it wasn't quite the same, but it was sort of. Okay, grow, growing up in West Philly, you know, it was more stickball, and uh, uh, you know, we, we even we even adapted the game to something we called stepball. We would go to the the, the local uh, five and ten, the, the uh, store down the block, down the street, and you get the the uh, you remember them? The the uh, uh, they were like pimple balls. They were made of plastic, and you might be too young, and you know, they would split within a day, right? Yeah. So we would play something called we would use that for stickball in the street, and when it split, we play something called half ball, which which meant we used the only one sphere of it. Okay, and you would hit it, you would catch it, you would throw it, and it didn't work perfectly, but <clears throat> you know. So there's just so many things that 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 it involves, and I think that's why the movies really work. I mean, Sandlot's great because it talks about ch childhood, which brings me to my first one. Um. Oh, GT, uh, GT Key. You know, I forgot, I forgot to put that one on the list. Uh, shame. I, I, it's on my list. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> there are so many. There well, my favorite, my, my number one has got to be Bad News Bears from uh, 1976. All right. So, so that to me was a movie which talked about the kind of things that were going on. You know, I, I you know, I had to be about seven when the movie came out. So, a little risque for seven, I think, but it was advertised as a baseball movie, and you go and you watch it, and you know, I remember my mom going, "What? What? This is for kids? What?" Um, but it, it it talked a lot a lot about you know, for me as 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 a, a, a young kid about you know older kids and what they're going through and whatever, and it it, it was a reflection of the times. Uh, Math Hour obviously did a tremendous job uh, playing the the drunk old <laughs> ex minor yeah. leaguer. So, so, but that was the very first baseball movie that I ever saw. So for me, that, that, that's always a special place in my heart. Yeah, man. And I love that our favorite baseball movies are ones that we watched as kids that are about kids that are about the sports from a child's perspective, but you still, especially in bad news right. bear, you get that, like, you know, like you said, the grumpy former player who's like coach and Walter Matthau does a fantastic job. I even like not as much, but I even like the remake that Richard Linklater did with Billy Bob Thornton. <laughs> I didn't. I what? didn't. I, I it just didn't work for me. You know, I, I think there's certain movies you make one. It was great. It was fantastic. You're done. OK, when they went to what, make Bad New, New Bears Two, the original, it, it got stupid. And then the third one, they go to Tokyo. It got even stupider. You know, that first one was perfect. 
you know, yeah. and, and then they just should have just stopped right there. But they didn't. But what are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do about it? All right. My next one on my list <clears throat> is what I from. I mean, I've never been a professional baseball player in the minor league systems. Right. But from what I hear, Ron Shelton knew exactly what that felt like and completely perfectly captures it in Bull Durham. I love Bull Durham. Bull Durham is if the Sandlot didn't exist, it would be my favorite baseball movie because first of all, they say that this is what it feels like to be an aging player in the minor league system where you're being used just to set up the new hot guy, right? Kevin Costner's a catcher. He's trying, he, there, he's there to basically train Tim Robbins, this up and coming pitcher. Um, Susan Sarandon's in it. As the, what's yeah, Right, exactly. Uh, Susan Sarandon's there as the muse to these players. It is a sexy film. It is a factual film. It is a film filled with heart, comedy, and it is expertly crafted, in my opinion. And I'm not the biggest Kevin Costner fan. And he's in three baseball movies that I can think of off the top of my head. And this is the only one that I really, really, really like. Bull Durham, one of my favorites. What do you think about that one, Rick? That would be number two on my list as well. And the reason I love Bull Durham, you know, obviously you said it, it was just a, a, a tremendously made movie. Okay. It had some drama in it. It had some romance in it. It had, you know, a, a comedy in it. And, 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 you know, all of this, all of this mixture, but, what was best was that it talked about all those aspects of baseball. You know, that when you take out all the lights and everything else, the, the, the really hardcore, you know, point of it, there are so many things that came out of that movie that I still use to this day with, with my daughter's team. Okay, so you're talking about a bunch of 12-year-olds. Um, one of the greatest scenes was when uh, Kevin Costner and Susan Sarandon get into an argument. After Lucia gets, uh, uh, or they get into an argument in the middle of the se season because uh, Susan Sarandon gave him those garters to wear, right? And she she comes through and and then ends up they, they he uh, nukes the sides of abstain from sex, right? And she's blaming and they start winning, so she's blaming Ke the Kevin Costner character that that is his fault. He's interfering in her life. And he has this one speech when he goes off on her, which to me is so, was so, so deep and poetic, okay, about the sport. Yeah. If you believe something is making you win, then it does become true. If, if, if Nuka Lush believes the gar wearing a garter belt under his uniform and not having sex is why he's winning, okay? Yep. And, and her as an, as a baseball muse, if you will, you know, he was mad at her. He said, you should know that. You should know that fact. If you believe something is making you win or making you better, then it does become true. Yeah. And that to me was was probably the best scene in the whole movie. Uh, I, second want to, scene, I want to go watch second, Bull Durham right now. I'll tell you that. Yeah, the, second best scene, the second best scene was when he's taking all these young kids, right? And he goes, you guys want you, you guys want a, a, a rain out? He goes, what are you talking about? A rain out. And they turn on the faucet. He goes, rain out. Okay. All right. Uh, as a coach uh, through the years in softball, I've known, you know, that that's very real. That, that's a real concern that you have to deal with is the condition of the fields, and everything else. So to me, that was the funniest thing. I, 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 I love that movie. And they're just so the whole movie is wrapped around that. Yeah. You know, I, it just is preparing him for the majors. Uh, um, um, you know, all these other things. And, and the guy, you know, the nuclear loose character. I loved him. It was, it was just a great character. Okay, just airheaded uh, uh, phenom with a uh, cannon for an arm, but you know doesn't have two cents between this between his ears. Yeah, and that to me is uh, um, that to me was just the ultimate. Um, so I, I again, I'm with you. I, I Bull Durham is is number two on my list. Nice. What's next? A movie that you told me you had not seen yet, and you must go see it. Okay, for for a lot of different reasons, would be forty two. 42 was the first movie I've ever seen Chadwick Boseman in, and I thought he was tremendous, okay? It was far enough removed from, at least for me, in time, right? Like, I, I didn't get to, I didn't watch Jackie Robinson play, 
you know, I, I see old news clips of them, but they're short and they're sweet. They're, you know, some are even black and white. So I don't, I don't have a real memory of him. Um, so, you know, like a Mike Schmidt or somebody like that. I do. So from that perspective, Chadwick Boseman played a character that I could believe was Jackie Robinson. And I had to go through the things that Jackie Robinson went through. And it was a pivotal moment in baseball. All right. And I watched that movie with my daughter. And to this day, my daughter never became a baseball fan. I don't know why. And she's a softball coach. She's got her first high school job this uh, uh, this season. And but I could never get her to just watch, I guess, because it's kind of boring if you if you know, if you're a little kid, whatever. But <clears throat> we have talked about the history of baseball because it relates to softball. And that was one of the movies we sat down and watched, you know, um, and I said, you know, this is a really important piece of uh, piece of history in American history, but also in baseball history. And my daughter will tell you, you know, Jackie Robinson Day, everybody wears 42. Okay, she'll be even be able to tell you who was the last player to wear 42. You must know this. Who was it? Was it? Uh... Come, come. I'm blanking. You got to help me out. Your favorite team. I know. I'm trying to think. Was it? Was it wasn't Rivera? Was it? It was. He okay. was the last active living player to wear 42. And after Rivera retired, they retired number 42. Okay. That makes sense then. I think yeah. I do. Cause that was in my head. I'd like immediately, I was like Mariano. And then I was like, I don't surely yeah. it was no, before that. Was yeah, you're him. right. Yep. They let him wear it until he retired. And then nobody else was ever issued 42 during, during his career. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that to me was, and it was, it was a good movie. I mean, it really was, it was well done. Um, you, you know, you, you saw, the risks that Dodgers took, um, you know, in bringing on the first full-time black black uh, uh, baseball player, um, but uh, you know, I, I think I think it was uh, uh, a fantastic movie. Scarpad, I, I don't remember if uh, uh, if Vaughn wore forty-two. He might have, but at that point, it hadn't been uh, the, the MLB had not uh, fully retired the number. And, uh, and Marcus, I, believe... I think we're talking about Mariano Rivera, not Nicieza, but maybe he did. <laughs> Maybe he did. Who's here today? Maybe I can bring him in. Ask him if he played if he played uh, under number forty two. And uh, blood splatter chatter basketball definitely is going to be something coming up. And we got the finals oh, yeah. on the horizon. So I'm, I'm a huge I'm, I'm a huge fan, a sports fan, obviously as as we know. So I would love to to do that as well. Uh, yeah, uh, I can think some movies. So for me, forty two. Forty two uh, is one that I play. definitely want to see for sure. And uh, you should. You should. Yeah. It, it is a tremendous. It's a it's a well made movie and it's a great story and I thought they did justice. Um, uh, you, you you got to learn something about other people like Pee Wee Reese, okay, other characters that came in here and how they reacted during that period of time. It, it's 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 an excellent film, seriously. Nice. Perry Gaming has <laughs> some good chess movies. <laughs> um, yeah, like in search what searching for Bobby Fisher or something like that. Uh, I, it's it's isn't uh, chess more of a game than a sport? But I don't know, man. Thank you. Uh-oh, now it's going to blow up. <laughs> oh, par- sorry, Perry. Sorry. That's that's what you get for, for missing out on hanging out with me in Florida. Me and Perry completely missed each other in Florida. It was – anyway, so 42, definitely one I want to check out because I'm a fan of Bozeman as well as Jackie Robinson. Um, and you remember they did the Jackie Robinson story where he played himself, right? And yes. uh, Yeah, yes. so I remember that one. I've seen that one. All right, next yes. one on my list I, is – Jackie Robinson was a tremendous baseball player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, basketball. I see what you're saying. Not basketball, basketball. Yeah, yeah. I, I that that movie. It was a good movie, but I don't consider that a baseball. That's movie. neither baseball or a basketball movie, right? That's uh that's a the yeah. only basketball movie. It was yeah, a Perry great movie. ran into everybody but me. All right, so next on my list is one we mentioned earlier, Eight Men Out. I love Eight Men Out. A fantastic cast, such a well-crafted movie. And it, it focuses on something. I remember being a kid growing up playing baseball, and you hear about the Black Sox. You hear about the scandal where they threw the World Series, right? And to see this movie, because there's so much judgment that got put on these individuals, right? Like Joe Jackson got banned from baseball for life, and all this kind of stuff happened, right? And when when this movie, I can't remember who made it right now off the top of my head, but they went through so much research to make sure they get the story right, but not just the facts of the story, but why it happened in the first place. 
And the reason why it happened was because of the greed of the ownerships, right? It was because of the greed of people like Comiskey, right? It wasn't necessarily the players being doing the wrong. They did the wrong thing technically, but they did it because there was a lot of nuance to that situation. And they do not lose the human element for me in eight men out. So it feels very classic. It sheds a light on a very controversial moment in baseball history. And it adds many layers to it that I think ring very, very true. I absolutely adore eight men out. Uh, I, I love, I love the movie. I thought it was well done. I thought it was a, a interesting biopic in a period of time. Uh, but I got to disagree with you, my friend. Um, and, and I will tell you, I am one of the, the greatest supporters of uh, the period where uh, Kurt Flood, uh, I believe it was in the 19, early 1970s, he was the one that, that really, uh, his, his battle with MLB is what shifted uh, player salaries. And uh, what exists today with the exorbitant salaries that we see is, is thanks to Kurt Flood, who I, I believe, uh, if my baseball history is correct, really never benefited from that. But it was his his battle with MLB through the court system that I think it was 1970, I want to say, I'm not sure, uh, was when that happened. Um, I agree with everything that you say um, I, in the sense that it was the greed of people like Kaminsky and everybody else that created the situation that, that, that the owners were sucking up all the money and none of the players were getting any money. And that was the whole point of the Kirk Flood thing is that is is that you know we're bringing we're putting people in the seats uh you're just collecting the money okay you can't keep all the money and you can't treat major league baseball players like property okay that you can buy and trade and stuff against their their will and you know without any kind of input of any kind of any any sort but for the for the black Sox, for shoeless joe and everybody else my problem was this is what you signed up for Okay, this is 1919. Most people are not earning the kind of money you're earning. All right. Now, if you felt it was unfair and you wanted to battle the owners, that's fine. But don't cheat the game and then say, well, you know, we're not paid fairly. This is what you agree to. Just like the guy who's selling the hot dogs at, at, at the park. This is what you agree to. You don't get to cheat. Because, well, they're not paying me enough and I got, you know, a wife that buys a lot of stuff. And uh, no, uh -uh. the game is the game you signed up for. It. This is what you agreed to do it for. OK, so so the reason it probably didn't make my list was because to, to me, that was a, a very poor period in, in, in baseball history. It was a black black, excuse the uh, 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 the analogy, but a black mark on baseball and the organization as a whole. And my point is this, it didn't really change anything, okay? Because, because it, it happened in 1919. The Kurt Flood thing didn't happen until the 1970s. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what I like about it is it just doesn't go in in a judgmental stance. Like, it shows, like, a lot of the nuances behind it. Yeah, like, I agree yeah, yeah, with yeah, that. They yeah. should not have thrown yeah. the game. You know what I'm saying? And it yeah. wasn't everybody, yeah. too. And they point that out, too. It wasn't everybody on there. It was, like, certain people, and some people were pressured into it. Some people gave up the idea of throwing the game by the end of it, but it was too late. And so I, I think I liked how it didn't just be like, these guys are bad guys because of what they did. It showed, or it was attempting to show more of the, the reasons why, right. And what the, what the, what the, uh, the, what the vibe was like back then. What, what the, uh, I'm, I'm, I can't think of the word right now, but what the, the situation. Look, be, yeah. Look, I'll be the, um, well, scar pad. I gotta tell you something, man. Uh, sports betting is part of sports. Unfortunately, it, it, you know, I'm I'm not a betting man, but I recognize if you don't legalize it, guess what? They're still betting. All right, everybody's still doing it. So it really, it really is just an unfortunate. It's gambling in its nature, anything of chance, so to speak. Okay, you, there's no way you're ever going to be able to stop it or prevent it or anything like that. But, but let me say this. I mean. I do agree that at this point in time, I you don't even want to get me started about the whole whole Hall of Fame system, okay? In a way that happens, all right? You don't even want to get me because then we're going to definitely have a Rex rant. But I say I will say this is that it's time for guys like Shoeless Joe, based on the career that he had, to be allowed into the Hall of Fame. 
and you know what difference will it make i don't know if it'll make any but he deserves to be in the hall of fame especially okay uh who is it is it fernando tatis who, who's coming back who, who's uh doing rehab in uh uh down in the minors Shoot, i don't know it's got uh for um, i want to say the padres uh but it was suspended for steroid use all yeah, right it's him how can we look at that and say well we're going to suspend you for a season and a half but you can come back okay all right well how can and, you and how can you cheat your way to the, how, how about this how can you cheat your way to the world series in 2017 and still have that title i don't know like you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know. I, I, I would agree with that. I, I I would agree with that statement as well. So, I mean, there are things, you know, Marcus, yeah, Pete Rose really had a betting problem. I believe right up until the stuff came out about him and some some girl years and years ago, I, I, I was a big supporter of Pete getting into the hall. Now with that information coming out, I don't know. Okay. Now I, it's sort of like I have no opinion. And I, I don't care and maybe he shouldn't. Okay. But when it was just the betting thing, I'm like, dude, let the guy in, man. Yeah, right. and if it's all about like personal stuff, like I mean, Ty Cobb's still in the Hall of Fame, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you. You yeah, know, so. Pete Rose had a betting problem. Okay, all right, he he just had a problem, and and he couldn't stop himself. And was it smart? It wasn't. But to ban him for life, okay, Giamatti, uh, was it was it was it Giamatti? I think was was uh, was commissioner at the time. Um, he yeah. Was it? Yeah. Him? I, I, yeah. He, he, you know, he just didn't like Rose. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and now it's just hell. So, um, uh, yeah. So, but again, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. What's next on your list? All right. Next. Okay. We're going with the, the digit, digits is 61. That, that really was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Really enjoyed it. And I hate the Yankees. Uh, but that was the, you know, that was the ultimate chase that year uh, between Maris and Mantle. It showed the kind of things that were going on. Uh, it gave us a real look at them, in a sense. Um, you know, I knew that there was some negativity, but I, you know, obviously I wasn't alive uh, in 1961. So, <clears throat> you know, it just became a piece of baseball history to me. I knew that there was some negativity. You, I, I've seen some articles, whatever, you know, towards Maris um, that Matt didn't receive because they were chasing down Ruth's record. And I didn't realize it was that negative or that nasty until I really saw the movie and saw the kind of things the poor guy was going through. You know, Mantle got a pass because he was the new, the, the, the new kid, whatever, right? Um, Maris obviously did not. And he wasn't as personable. You know, unfortunately, as, as Mantle was. Mantle was bubbly, and, and I hate to say it, but probably because most of the time the dude was drunk. You know, yeah. so you know he, he was, but he was always that that kind of guy. You know, he was he was a New York darling, and Maris was not. And but watching that happen at very historic point in history, and and you know, breaking obviously Ruth's record is 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 phenomenal. So I love that movie, and it, it was uh, Billy Crystal was was. was I don't direct it. Did he direct it? With I think he did. did. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, I wasn't sure if he was director or producer, but he's a lifelong baseball fan, lifelong Yankee fan. So that's why the movie was as good as it was. Was it was told from his perspective. Perspective. So being able to watch it through his eyes, growing up during that period, was phenomenal. It was a great film. Great film. Yeah, I double checked. It was indeed directed by Billy Crystal, and yes, I love hearing Billy Crystal talk about baseball in the Ken Burns documentary. He's in there and he has a lot of cool stuff that he says. And I, I, I share that same joy in 61. I haven't seen that movie in years. And I thought about watching it again last year because there were so many references it, to it when J Aaron judge was chasing that American league record. Right. And right. Uh, which obviously isn't the record, but a lot of people, especially with the McGuire Sosa bond steroid thing, really consider that to be like, like a good, like there's regardless of who is in the lead with the numbers, <laughs> what Aaron judge did last year was phenomenal. Like that's not something that you're going to see every year. And then 61 is a cool reminder of that. Um, next one on my list is a league of their own. I love that movie. It is so funny. And this was the first time I ever heard of the idea of the women's baseball stuff that happened back then. Cause right. Like, uh, 
this was during what was it during World War II when it was World going World on, World right? World and so yeah. women were entering I the workforce. Williams and everybody else got drafted. Yeah. And so I I didn't even know about that. So when I was a kid watching that movie, it it it, it educated me on that. And I really love that movie. It's got a great cast. Gina Davis is amazing. Tom Hanks. I still very vividly remember just cracking up when he's like, he drinks the Coca-Cola instead of a beer. And he's like, this is really good. And you know, my mom, I remember going like, it's because I had cocaine in it. I think by that point they had removed the cocaine, but still such a great movie. It's about the sport and how the sport isn't just a, a, a boys club, right? These women had a lot of heart. These women were thrust in the situation, uh, had a great cast. Madonna is in it. Um, so I'm always a fan of a movie with Madonna. So I love A League of Their Own. Very funny. And it gave us the 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 incredible line, there's no crying in baseball, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be the next one on my list. Um, I love this movie. Well, it was a great cast, obviously. All right. So the casting was great. The shots were, they didn't find all the women that could necessarily play ball, you can tell, um, but but it was okay, all right? Uh, uh, Tom Hanks, Jimmy Dugan was hilarious. I mean, burnt out old grizzly. It reminds me a lot of Bull Durham because it covered all those aspects, right? Um, it, it was funny, it was funny, uh, hilarious at times. It was sad at times, okay? That one scene where, um, the, the one player, her husband gets killed and the guy, you know, the telegram uh, guy comes in and, yeah. and 20th thing was when, you know, when Jimmy Dugan throws him out and he goes, oh, well, now I got to go back to the office. He's like, give it to me and throws him out of the locker room, you know, and he's walking. You know, that was, that was, that was so dramatic. That was so, so heartbreaking, you know, and I could imagine what each of one, each one of those players were, were thinking as he was walking through, you know, uh, the little kid. Oh, that guy, that was hilarious. Um, it was just a, 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 such a well-made movie, talked about a period of time. And for me, the movie was very special because it came out before my, my daughter was born. But we, when she got old enough, we went and we watched it. And we, we, we watched it several times. And that was how she kind of developed her love of sports and, and softball specifically because it was a movie that said, hey, you know, everybody, when they get in a sport, uh, for, for girls, when they get in sports, they think that this is a now thing. It's something that just happened. Okay. Well, now you go back to, to, to the 40s and see that this really existed. And then I was working in convention one year, and the, the ladies of baseball were there, uh, surviving some some surviving members. And we still have a poster that's hanging in my house that they signed for. And we got to, and my daughter was with me, and we got to talk to them and stuff, and and all that great stuff. Uh, and it, it was it was. It was a, 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 another one of those historic moment in, in baseball. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's a shame. shame. It's a shame that, you know, it, it ended up the way it ended up. Yeah, Eventually, it is. That's a really cool story that you got, y'all got to meet some of those people and you got the, like a picture signed. And we so did that influence your daughter's like desire yeah. to like, play? I think so. I, I don't know. She had to be about at that point, 11, 12. So she was already playing. But I wanted her to see that, you know, there there were ones behind you. Oh, no, no. She was 11 or 12 when we met them, right? And I remember saying, hey, I just found out. You remember the movie, The League of Their Own? She goes, yeah. I said, well, there are girls. There are uh, women that play from the All-American uh, Girls Professional League. And she got all excited. And we went and talked to them. They were real nice, you know, really nice ladies. You know, obviously, they're all grandmothers and and great grandmothers and stuff. And and it was it was, it was was it was really fun for my daughter to be able to. To catch that so i think what she learned was that a woman can truly truly do anything a man can do and it, it and it wasn't just today as as people became more enlightened if you will but even back then and and that was uh that was hey bj that was what she 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 kind of took out of it a confidence in that yeah it can be done and that that was what was was really magical about the moment. And so I love that movie. We, we still, you know, if, if she's around, we'll watch it. You know, even now. That's awesome. She, I, was just wearing, I was just wearing huh? my "There's No Crying in Baseball" shirt yesterday. I should have worn it today. Well, and my daughter, my daughter played catcher through through high school and college. So, so that was very relevant. So maybe that did have an influence. I said, you know, you, you, it, it probably is. Everybody thinks pitcher is the most important position uh, on the field. It's not. Oh man, but, I'll tell you what. 
that's the one position I never wanted to play was catcher because that is the hardest. It is the most strenuous. It is terrible for your knees. <laughs> like it's just not like a catcher. I, I have nothing but respect for catchers, man, because catchers are, it's a ridiculous position to have to play. And you got to work with so many different people. You got to get, you. it's just, that's the whole well, thing. Well, be, well, because, because we coach it, I, you know, I remind her catchers now, Okay, you are the general on the field, and there's one reason. And it was kind of looking at me confused. I said, I don't care if you're shy normally or whatever, but you got to take charge. And they go, Why? I go, You're the only player that's facing the entire field. You're the only one can, that can see all the action that's going on. Okay, at some point, every other player, all eight of them, will, will have be forced to have their back turned. Okay, to deal with what they got to deal with. Yeah. But you can see it all, so you have to direct the other eight girls. So yeah, yeah so. So for me, obviously, great movie, well done. Obviously, based on its, its box office uh, success. But for me personally, it's probably probably should have been number one. But obviously, Bad News Bears from uh, 1976. That's first baseball movie. It was the first one that really got me going. You know what I mean? Nice. What's next on your list? Uh, the other one that we talked about, Moneyball. Okay, love Moneyball. Okay, and for. A totally different reason than than liking the uh, uh, the other movies. Okay, mm-hmm. Moneyball went into an aspect that nobody's ever looked at, and talks about a lot of tru- truisms in baseball that that I even use with my because my daughter does all the coaching, but I do I crunch the numbers and give her the well. The, here's where you, I know you think, but here here's where she's hidden, and it exposed all of that. And it really was very interesting, and, and it became something that is now used to, to, to this day, okay? Uh, it, the, the massive shift they just outlawed, okay, on the infield, that's a result of Moneyball, okay, or, or that type of, of thinking going purely statistical. Now, do I agree with that? No, but I can see the effect of, effectiveness of it. So the whole movie surrounds uh, um, him trying to, to, with no budget, trying to get players right yeah and and he's he needs to do it on a budget on a walmart budget so what he's looking at are those stats are going to be relevant on base percentage that type of thing while the old guys are like no i don't like him because okay and he's looking at these numbers and he goes okay for this x number of dollars this is the all base percentage we would be getting okay and that's true i remind the girls okay you you, you have pictures there trying to strike everybody out i go i don't want you to strike everybody out okay because when you strike somebody out, you got to throw at least three pitches. If you can induce a, a weak grounder in the infield on, on the first pitch, boom. Yep. Okay. That's much better for all of us. A three, pitch, you, inning. A three huh? pitch inning is better than a nine pitch inning. I, always, right? Yep. I said, you know, the key is quality at bats. So, he, he, you know, you watch as he took this. It was really interesting. Okay. Uh, uh, Jason Giambi was a topic, right? And his own pace percentage was lousy, but he was getting big bucks. I mean, you guys even signed him, I think. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Both Giambi's at some point, right? I think so. so yeah. he's, looking, he's going like this guy's bargain basement price, and his own base percentage is better than Giambi's. Why would we want to spend the money on Giambi? And it was just, it was a great movie in that sense. A whole, day, never seen a baseball movie that really dealt with that end of it. Yeah. You know, and obviously it became kind of uh, part of the, the mantra, if you will, the rule, the, 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 uh, uh, the playbook, if you will, for a lot of major league teams. Yeah. And it's even, it's evolved since then. Right. And now they got, yeah. the, what is it? The on-base percentage and the, what is it? The average, they got that thing where it's combined now and it's the, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah and it's just, sometimes there was moments where I'm just like, I don't understand some of these numbers. Right. And now it's all about yeah, long yeah. angle and stuff, yeah. you know, and like, it's, it's ridiculous. And, and you were talking about the shift. Where they're, they're like fighting the shift now. Have you seen any of the games lately where like since yeah. they banned so, the shift, so they're doing all weird kind of things to get around it? To make all the rules, but teams will find ways around. Okay, exactly. So now they're shifting the outfield. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how long will it be before there's a rule about that next season, right? But, but you know that that's hey, listen, the the, the game has got to evolve, and I agree with that. I mean, I you know, listen, you know, I don't know about the, this 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 pitch timer. Uh, thing. It's so know. weird. You see these people that are getting struck out because they didn't make eye contact with the pitcher and stuff. And you're like, what? Yeah, That's well, get ready for a whole other stat line. Yeah. Okay. 
because there nobody wants to show that they've had X number of strikeouts if uh, like forty percent of them are from the pitch clock, right? Yeah. So That's you're true. gonna have another stat line now with without the pitch clock. Tr- you, you can trust me on that one. Baseball so, really but, is a, a geeky sport, in it where like more it, than it, any, it's, it's about the other beauty part about it. Yeah, you know that's what I love about this game is that that there's so many other things that that, that, that you can look at. Your math whiz, your math guy, go for it. Okay, this is a sport for you. There are all kinds of stats we need to we need you to run. Yeah. Okay, you know it, it, it's it's awesome, dude. It, it, it's it's just a magical game. So uh, for me, Moneyball was definitely on the list because it was the first one where first baseball movie where they dealt with something that never, never a topic that never been dealt with before and it was yeah. a great story too yeah i still need to see that one I, i've been meaning to see that one for a while and it's i think it's co-written by aaron sorkin so i've heard mm-hmm. so many good things about it and uh, i definitely need to watch that in 42 and the next one on my list is major league because wow, major league here buddy what's that we are simpatico here yeah major that is league is just so freaking funny right like and I love the underdog aspect of it. Like the team, like the owner wants the team to tank so she can sell it to Miami. And this is back when Miami didn't have a team. Right. And just so many memorable characters. You got Charlie Sheen. Of course, everybody remembers the wild thing bit, the glasses, having to wear the glasses. And all of a sudden he becomes a great pitcher. Tom Berenger's great in it. Uh, Corbin, what's his name? Corbin. Corbin yeah, he's great in it. The the dude, the all state dude who was the president in 24 with his like uh with his uh his 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 uh his like doll or whatever is like his like god yeah, 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 yeah. right? Like I love that. And yeah, then of course cool. Wesley Snipes is Willie Mays Hayes. Like that's still a great bit where he slides in and he just doesn't and, even and get yeah, to the back. Sure. <laughs> I think that movie is incredibly funny and definitely deserves a place in the list. I I, I agree. Uh, that's right, Serrano. Um, uh, it, it was just a good, a feel-good movie. Um, it was a, a comedy through and through. Really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so that that one was on my list as well. And it's ironic be, because it looks like at this point the A's are doing exactly what the the quote unquote Indians from the movie are doing, trying to yeah. tank his way out of Oakland, um, which is a shame. Well, they want to go to Vegas, right? And I just don't know how that's going to work. They want to go to Vegas, right? And I don't know how much. I don't know. That's weird. Well, well, I'm trying to get attendance so low. I I just read an article yesterday that uh, their last game, their attendance was lower than at least something like 20 minor league teams. Wow. At one point, their attendance was half of the highest one minor league team. That's ridiculous. And, you know, I actually love the A's and I grew up loving the A's too. The Yankees and the A's and the Braves were like some of my favorite teams growing up. And it's because our minor league team at the time was the Huntsville stars and they were an affiliate for the Oakland Athletics. <laughs> and so they would do this thing every year. And we had Ozzy Canseco played for us, but they did this thing every year where some players from the A's would come and play against our Huntsville stars. So we, I seen Mark McGuire and Jose Canseco, and Miguel Tejada, like I got to see those dudes here in my hometown because they came. So like a lot of us here are A's fans and, and, and I hate what's happened to them, but I still love them pesky A's. And for a while, they've kind of had that feeling of the, of the Cleveland Indians from major league, right. you know, where it feels like they're just kind of like a joke. Oh, and what Bob Euchre in that movie is so freaking funny too. Oh, the- I know, I know, oh, I know. <laughs> it was just it was just a feel good movie, you know, a feel good baseball movie. So I, I really enjoyed that one as well. Heck yeah. All right. Well, we're 45 minutes in, so let's just do a like a rapid fire. What 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 else is on your All right, list? So my rapid fire, okay, is obviously Field of Dreams. Uh, I I really I really, you know, it wasn't as baseball-y, but it had just this aura for me, you know, the whole movie. Um then of course the natural. Uh, with Robert Redford, another great storyline, you know, um, well shot too, you know, when he, when he busts up all the lights, just a great shot. It's a very mythical Uh, baseball movie that I love so much. You know, it, it, so much of baseball is also legend and myth and it really like elevates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lightning boy. I mean, it was just, it was a great movie. Um, kind of a mystical kind of movie, if you will. Last one is probably one not a lot of people have heard about. It's called Everyone's Hero, and it is animated. 
And it is a story about a kid who goes to a Yankees game and steals uh, or doesn't steal. Uh, somebody steals and he tries to rescue Babe Ruth's bat. And the, and the bat can talk. Okay. So clearly it's a kid's movie. Um, it, it came out in 20, 2006. So my daughter was around six years old. So we watched it like numerous times. It was a cute movie. It had baseball in it. It had an animated Babe Ruth in it. Um, you know, it was an adventure. My daughter loved it. It was at least baseball related. And I didn't have to watch Lilo and Stitch for, for the you know millionth time. So, you know, it, 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 it made my list because it brings back good memories for me. Nice. Um, rounding out my list, I've got Little Big League, which is about the kid that inherits a baseball team and he's like in charge of it, right? I remember so, that one. So I like that one. I got Mr. Baseball here with Tom Selleck when he's the uh, baseball like player. That. Has to go to Japan. I don't know. I remember liking it. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. So if I rewatched I it, I may be surprised, but I don't know. I, I like that movie. Angels in the Outfield is another one I really liked. It's cheesy. It's kind of dumb, but it's got Don, uh, it's got uh, Danny Glover and, and uh, what's uh, who's the boss? Tom, uh, what's his name? Oh my goodness. It's Ted Danza. Ted Danza's in that movie, but I liked that one as a kid. Um, Pride of the Yankees which is the one about Lou Gehrig, right? I love that movie. Love that movie. Lou Gehrig's very important to me in my life as, a, as just a personal hero. And I'm a big fan of this movie. I saw it when it debuted in theater, and it was everything I wanted, but it was the Cubs instead of the Yankees. Rookie of the Year. About the kid who hurts his arm, and now he just got the most wicked pitch, so he winds up hitting the majors. And what kid didn't want to just be able to play in the majors and Rookie of the Year? did such a great job for a kid's movie for me at that time of, of transporting me to that era. So those are the ones to round me off. And a big major shout out. I don't think we considered this a movie, but the Ken Burns baseball documentary series. If you oh, have watched yeah. it, you got to watch that. That's if you out there have not seen it. You got to, he just did one it about is, Jackie yeah, Robinson. Yeah. He, yeah. He did a Jackie Robinson one too. That's really good. And I love that they, he did the 10th inning. You know, later on when the there was more to talk episode, about. He kind of breezed through, right? You know, yeah. it, it kind of felt a little compressed, like he ran out of time sort of thing, which is okay. But overall, the documentary series I thought was phenomenal. Yeah, really, really did. And that's why I did like the 10th inning because of it. Then it, the problem is every time I watch it, Rex, every time I never finish it. I never watch like the last 15 minutes because it's all about the 2004 Red Sox. And I just cut it off. I'm like, I don't need to relive that one again, man. <laughs> Uh, too funny. All right, so we got some new stuff up on the Shopify account this week, don't we, Rex? We do. All right, so let me see here. All right, so we have Avengers uh, number 50. It's uh, Legacy 750, and that's just thrown out there for six bucks. It's on the site for Robbie, and keep in mind that this all helps out Robbie. Uh, he gets a portion of the proceeds to help him keep doing the things he's doing, producing the shows he's producing, uh, you know, and that type uh, type of stuff, you know, again, and get a chance to meet Frank Miller and all kinds of good stuff like that, right? Yes. Um, so that's available. And then this is uh, our uh, sketch cover of the day, Invincible Iron Man, number 600, signed with Iron Man versus Kang cover sketch by Joe Del Beato and Mariano Nicieza. It's good. I, I, they, you know, they're, they're starting to do some really interesting stuff for us. Yeah, I love this so, one, too, because it's an homage to that Doom versus Iron Man cover, but now it's Kang well, I, and Iron Man. I, I really think like it's uh, number uh, 150, I want to say. So it's a homage cover. But, yeah, uh, this is a great piece, and we have it for $62. These are all on the site. So if you want to check anything out, all you have to do is link up to the site. There's a lot of other stuff there as well. Uh, timeless number one, Alex Malev. Incentive variant cover, it's the one in 25 ratio. Uh, you see floating out there. I think we put it at a uh, a rock and robbie special price of I want to say 20 bucks. Did it? Did I, I didn't write it down, but check uh, out the sign because there's a there's all kinds of other stuff. sign yeah. book. What's that? I said you got it for 25 on the site. Oh, 25. I'm sorry. Oh, um, I should write things down. Sign books by Jurgens, Matt Fraction, Scott Lobdell. Uh, sketch covers by Ken Hazer still available. Uh, a four cover connecting set. Uh, let me see here. 
uh, other work by Ken Hazer, now something new from uh, uh, Mariana Nicieza. Check it out. Uh, you just click on a link. You can take care of payment right there on the site, and we'll get it out to you ASAP. And, again, keep in mind, all of this stuff helps out our buddy Robbie so he can keep, keep putting on the great content he's been putting on uh, and, uh, you know, keep it, keep his uh, station moving and alive. So if you love Robbie and stuff he's been putting out there, uh, you know, check out the site and pick up a few great comments. Nice. So what do you got going on? Uh, first of all, I appreciate you guys helping me out with the Shopify. I'm very surprised nobody's bought that Garbage Pail Kids Mars Attacks uh, Ken Hazer sketch because that's that's an awesome piece. And uh, dude, J.R. Ryan, Sandlot was the first was one we talked first. about. Yep. Yeah, Sandlot was first, brother. Yeah, first one we talked about. So just catch it on the replay. As far as us, we got to uh, see tomorrow night. I'm not going to be on Dylan's Horror Show, but they're going to be talking about Critters 1 and 2. So I encourage everybody to check that out. Sunday night is going to be a special Teen Dog Shades night of Rock and Robbie Live. Um, in honor of Easter Sunday, we're going to be talking about Rebirth, Resurrection, all kinds of fun stuff, as well as the normal stuff like the DC Sneak Peek and Datman, Batman. And then Monday night, we're talking about the Sylvester Stallone Cinema Milestone, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. One of, this movie came out in 1992. I remember loving it. I haven't seen it since back in the I early really 90s. I liked that movie and I thought it was going to be so stupid. Right? I'm just I just watched it the other night. It holds up, Rex. It's still a good movie. I think it's a really good movie. So, I I liked it. I I thought it would be stupid, you know, but yeah. it turned out to be quite funny. Absolutely. The best team up. Yeah, it's his best team up movie. Yeah, right. I don't know, man. There's some good ones out there, but you might be right about that one. I don't know. It's Estelle Getty and Sylvester Stallone. They should have done a sequel to that one. That would have been great. Um, and it's one of those movies too, where they say the name of the movie in the movie and it works where he's just like, stop. Or my mom will shoot. I just love the embarrassment that Stallone's feeling through the whole thing. So it's going to be a good conversation. What about you guys? What do y'all have coming up, Rex? Uh, well, uh, at 7 PM, we've got uh, Nick with the original art show. And at 4 PM, uh, all Eastern time, uh, we'll be on with Bueller, me and Amy. Nice. Our good buddy Bueller. And then we'll be going uh, on the EXP Monday. And I got the link in the description below for that show, for that exact show. So you can click that link, click the notification bell, and be ready for some great deals on the EXP on Monday night. All right, Rex. Well, thank you for joining us, buddy. As always, great topic today, buddy. Yeah, for real. And thank you out there in the PCP Army. If you're watching this on the replay, comment below. What are your favorite baseball games?